Good afternoon, everyone. Today, we are going to be talking about creating a space for your spiritual development. Now, this is actually one of my favorite subjects because how many of us say that we want to develop ourselves spiritually, but we don't make that space for it. So I have Pluto with me. You guys all know her and love her. Y'all have gotten really um, the opportunity to really get to know her. And I just want to kind of introduce her a little bit more for some of you guys like on YouTube who haven't really gotten to experience her as much. Um, as you know, I am part of a Western mystery tradition and she is my personal proctor and she has been with me from the very beginning over the past six years, helping me to develop myself spiritually she is like the cum de laude of spirituality. I mean, like she's got the PhD in spiritual development. So hold on to your seats, everybody. Make sure you're listening very closely because what she says is important. And I really want you guys to really pay attention to some of the key things that she's going to be bringing to the table. So I'm so excited to be doing this with you today. Um, is there anything else that I missed when I was explaining, you know, a little bit about you that you want to kind of throw out on the table? Well, first, I just want to say thanks for that really um, lovely introduction. It's very kind of you. Um, and uh, I want to just give a personal hello to everyone out there. I'm really excited to, you know, have the opportunity to work with Aquarius. Um, you know, she's just been such a wonderful student and um, I know that she has been utilizing, you know, her own personal transformation, you know, to help others transform as well. So uh, the team up has just been great. And, you know, as we continue on, we're just ramping up more and uh, it's just been, it's been a wonderful blessing. So happy to be here with, with you, Aquarius, and with you all out there as well. Yeah, you know, that actually brings up a point that I think uh, we probably should mention before we really get deep into the subject is how do we come up with this whole thing? Like, what started it? And it's really interesting because you brought up the subject in a proctoring session. <laughs> and, and I was like, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, you know, like you had this vision, I had the vision. And now we're noticing that some of our other brothers and sisters that are part of the tradition have been getting the vision as well. You know, like, how did this, um, you want to kind of step in with how, how you feel like this whole thing kind of came about? Um, yeah, sure. I can offer some insight. Um, so, you know, part of one's spiritual path is, you know, first learning how to let go of all of the things that are holding us back mentally, physically, emotionally. And that creates essentially a space for us to connect with what we call our higher self. And, um, you know, we can also describe this as your as your true self or that part of you that's always in connection with um, the divine energy. And as you formulate that relationship with your higher self, then, you know, the the connection between you and what well, what I'll just refer to as your higher wisdom becomes stronger over time. So um Earlier this year, I just started to, you know, receive some messages. I hear them colloquially referred to as downloads mm -hmm. uh, from other people yeah. <laughs> in the spiritual community. So, um, you know, and 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 at first, I, um, you know, I kind of like, I kind of like uh, pushed it off a little bit because, you know, a, I had been off of social media for about three years. I had just been trying to, you know, work on myself spiritually as well, kind of take it to the next level. So I was trying to remove distractions. Uh, but B, I just felt there was like this component of like, you know, egoism involved, you know, like putting yourself out there like a, you know, PhD of spirituality or whatever. And I thought, no, that's just the temptation of the ego. But it kept bombarding me over time. And so, you know, at minimum, I, I said, OK, well, I at least have to analyze this and just determine, you know, what's the test for me or what's really going on. And, you know, I started to apply some of the spiritual methods, you know, that we teach in our in our group. And, you know, I, I, I came to recognize that, um, you know, my resistance to it actually was the indicator that it was something I was meant to be doing. 
you know, I didn't want to get back on social media. I didn't want to put myself out there, um, you know, for a number of different reasons. But this was, you know, essentially a higher calling for me. So, you know, in the in the work that many people do in their spiritual traditions, um, a part of that work is fulfilling your true purpose. So, you know, for me, it's just been given, you know, to me, part of my true purpose is to find ways to extend these what are considered like cryptic, you know, secret, occult, mystery secrets, you know, to to communicate those in a way that don't go against the vows of various traditions, but can become um, digestible for people who, you know, haven't sought out those traditions on their own, um, but then also want to be on a spiritual path and may not be resonating with more traditional structures mm -hmm. that, you know, have, are well-founded in our society. So, you know, that's, that's been kind of the goal. And, you know, going back to you, we were talking about it during a mentoring session and, you know, uh, Aquarius confided in me, oh my gosh, I've been seeing this for so many years in my life, you know? <laughs> so, you know, that was, that was kind of like the second indication that this was something that we should be doing. And then we just saw, you know, the universe just kind of open up support. So that's how you end up in a position like this folks. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. But you know, don't you find it interesting um, how, you know, the difference between somebody who's really developing spiritually, you know, we still have our fears. I mean, we're human. We're going to have them. The difference between us and, you know, the ones that are really developing spiritually is we address it and we move past it. And I think you, your, you know, explanation about not really wanting to go <laughs> onto social media and then saying, you know what, if this is what spirit wants me to do, I'm going there. And you just kind of take all of your uh, personal ideas and feelings and you set it aside and you say, okay, Lord, lead me. And yeah. you kind of start doing that in that direction. I think that's part of it. I think another thing that should really be uh, clarified and emphasized is that, you know, before we become um, you know, what we call an initiate or, or somebody who becomes dedicated to the path. Um, we, in our, you know, our natural human kind of form um, are very much compelled by our fears, right? Fears are based in survival, um, whether it's like physical survival or even like social survival or familial survival or relationship survival, right? Um, and, and so it's very easy for us to get triggered um, as an initiate, uh, fear becomes a tool because um, we're tr we train ourselves to recognize when fear arises, conflict arises, whether it's personally or within a group, friction, uncomfortability, any of these things, you know, when they arise, uh, we train ourselves to, to step back and ask ourselves, what, why is this happening? Right. And not, you know, not with respect to like, well, what is the fear, but with respect to what is the lesson that the spirit is trying to open up for me? It becomes almost like a, like an arrow, right. Mm -hmm. That is indicating to you where there's space inside of you to grow and develop. And so it allows you to detach yourself from the fear, recognize it as a tool, and then, you know, to, to more easily overcome it. And, you know, when you overcome uh, that inherent fear, you know, you do have to sacrifice things sometimes like your ego or, you know, what maybe your lower base desires might be, or even things that you were previously driven towards, you know, very strongly for, um, you know, for your own spiritual development. But, you know, I will say on the other side of that, 100% uh, of the time, even if you feel like you're totally not clear on what's going on, when you do make that effort to sacrifice those, you know, uh, those lower parts of yourself, right? Like your ego, et cetera, for the greater purpose that's being gifted to you, it always works out. I'm going to say that again. It always works out. I've literally never seen in my life or anyone else's life where uh, they haven't gone through a personal trial 
for the benefit of their spiritual development or others where they it has not worked out for their benefit and usually even better than they consider. It's really overcoming that initial fear that plagues us and makes us feel like, well, it can't work out. Intellectually, I'm analyzing it. It's never going to work out if I do this or this. You know, that's the component of sacrifice and where I think that idea of like spiritual faith comes in. But faith is really just a bridge until confidence is built. Once you see that process happen over and over again, then, you know, it's, it's, you might get struck with those moments, but then you have a whole database essentially to go with and say, well, there's never been a time in 20 years where it hasn't worked out. So why would I think that it wouldn't now? <laughs> um, that it's the mental illusion that we go through. You know, we fantasize things in our head that are actually inadequate, inaccurate, and then it manifests in our lives. Um, you know, I love what you said, and I think it's a really good bridge for the conversation about creating that space for spirituality. Because, um, but before I even say this, I have to comment on something you said. You know how like when something keeps on getting repeated over and over again, it's like, hey, pay attention to that. Well, I was recording an episode with a new air, uh, podcast that I'm going to be doing with Brother Mercurio. He is, um, he started talking about, you know, Jesus on the cross and how that was the sacrifice. And that was a symbolism of what we're supposed to be doing in our life is sacrificing. And here you are saying this <laughs> about sacrificing again, about sacrificing our ego, sacrificing our fear, sacrificing our judgment and laying it on the line and saying, I'm letting this go. You know, um, it's, and, and I think that, like I said, this is such a good lead in for where we're going with this conversation about creating that space, because everybody always says we don't have enough time and there's always things that come up and there's all these issues that they have in their life. And if you are not making that time, you're not sacrificing it for that spiritual development. And I, I just thought that was such a, a great thing that you said that really, to me personally, I feel like, okay, I've heard this a couple of times now, it means something. So I really want to, I really want to thank you for that, because it's such a great lead in for so for our conversation about creating that space. So, you know, one of the things that I found is that no matter what it is, you know, whether it's emotional development, mental development, spiritual development, people do not make that space for it. They make space for the things that they don't want to do that they think they should do. And they make space for things that people tell them that they should do. <laughs> but they do not make space for the divine inside of them. Why? They say they want it, but why aren't they doing it? You know, go for it. Because <laughs> it just like propels me how, you know, they're not doing this. Well, I think there's, uh, everybody, of course, is different, right? Mm -hmm. um, but there are a number of themes that I have noted over the years for, for why this is so difficult for people initially to kind of overcome the hump, right? Mm -hmm. um, one is just basic, uh, you know, conditioning, right? Um, people don't grow up, you know, in many cases, understanding what the benefit of the spirit is it can be in their life, um, you know, or even how that works. It's just kind of like an ambiguous, you know, idea for them. So, you know, when it, when it comes down to weighing a very ambiguous idea versus things like, you know, well, I need to pay my bills. Um, people are much more motivated to throw their money into things, you know, even if they're not getting a good return on it, just because as they say, it's, it's better to go with the devil, you know, than the devil, you don't know. Right. Not that the spirit is the devil, but that's how people think about it. Right. It's like, they don't know they're unsure. So it's difficult for them to, to invest in something 
that they're, you know, unsure of. Um, another factor is, is, is people who start exploring the idea of various spiritual paths, you know, that will bring them to, tr to personal transformation, start to recognize these things like self-sacrifice, right, are inherently incorporated within the path. And that can be very scary. Um, you know, what, what is self-sacrifice? What do I do? What do I have to give up? Right. And that can, that can elicit any number of various reactions in people. Mm -hmm. uh, third is, you know, part of a spiritual path is true self-exploration, right? It's looking inside and asking yourself, you know, uh, where am I misaligned with, you know, my higher self or with, you know, with the divine self, um, and sometimes having those come to Jesus moments, right? Mm -hmm. Really just uh, putting it on the line and saying, hey, you know what? This is just not benefiting me. And sometimes people have to make very hard choices when it comes to that. And so that can often turn people away as well. You know, the the last thing I can think of, too, is just that um, people, sometimes people just don't even know where to start, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what I've been hearing a lot from, mm -hmm. you know, um, our, our wonderful family on the, on the Pluto Aquarius Limitless You forum is, um, you know, I want to do this, but I don't even know where to start. Like, mm -hmm. it's just such a, it's just such a foreign concept for me. So it's, you know, it's very hard then in that case, you know, to, to even start to cognize like, well, what changes do I need to make? You know, uh, how do I create space? How do I know what to prioritize and organize in my life, you know, so I can make these changes? I see the benefits. I want them. I'm willing to make the transformation aside, but I really don't know what the first initial steps are even to get to that point. Mm -hmm. I think I think you hit the nail on the head. Uh, a lot of times people just don't know where to start. But one of the things that I personally have seen is people do so much self-sacrificing that they're in there, they're sort of missing the point. There's this self-sacrificing of being selfless. And then there's self-sacrificing where you're not following the divine purpose, you know, that, that you were, you came into this world to do. And what they do is they develop their self value self-worth based on other people's thoughts and opinions. And so if their husband or their friends or their mother or their sister or their, you know, all these people that are in their life are not supportive of this new venture that they're going on, they, um, you know, they, they, a lot of times, especially with people, I noticed that people that are super spiritual that are just starting out they have a tendency of being in um, a very um, toxic relationship. Have you noticed that? And and so the partner will start criticizing them. Oh, you think you're better than everybody else because you're, you know, being all spiritual and blah, blah, blah. And they'll start criticizing them. And I know that this is part of the lesson. This is part of the growth to move past this stuff. And and realizing that your divinity, your that spirit that should reside in you is the most important first, you know, thing. You know, it says in the Bible, God first, right? That's number one. But people do not put God first. They put everybody else first. And then and then they put themselves last. But self is God. So it's like when you're allowing God to live within you, then those decisions that God is making for you in you that's coming through your consciousness should be first. I mean, yeah. And it also benefits everyone else. Too. Yeah. It does. That's, that's one thing people don't yeah. understand is when you're tapped in to the source of energy, right. Mm -hmm. And you feel fulfilled in all areas of your life, mentally, physically, emotionally, intellectually, you're proud of what you're doing in life. You're confident in who you are as a person. All things that come along, you know, through the path of spiritual development, not necessarily overnight, right? But they but they do uh, eventually, you know, um, ar arise within you, right? When you come from that space, then you make the right decisions. You formulate the best relationships. 
you can give advice and counsel to people from the best place within your heart. Mm -hmm. You can balance out your energy. So you're not just throwing it away on every little distraction that comes around that somebody makes you believe is like the end of the, the world or the universe. And you have energy left for yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, the, the relationships you formulate with people are much healthier. The choices you're making in life are much healthier. The and the the return that you get on all of that is much more valuable mm -hmm. um, because you are living in that space. You're already founded in a space of peace and happiness. Mm -hmm. So you know this goes to the there's you know this idea that we've that we've spoken a little bit about as above, so below, right? Mm -hmm. Some people have a concept of of you know, understand or conceptual understanding of this, right? What exists within, within yourself or what I refer to as your internal landscape manifests externally, right? This is where the, you know, the, the manifestation principles come from, right? If you want to see something change on the outside, you have to change inside first. Mm -hmm. So if you're in, if you're established in the spirit, the source of peace and happiness, the source of energy already then everything in your environment is reflected as such, right? Mm -hmm. And and so uh, you know it just naturally removes a lot of these you know complex situations that we just bring into our lives. And then if a complex situation does arrive, we have the wisdom and the foundation to deal with it appropriately. And look at it now, going back to our earlier part of our conversation from the space of, you know, what is this, what opportunity is this challenge presenting to me so I can, I can expand myself even more, right? Mm -hmm. It's like a constant return process. I call it a uh, thank you, Jesus, right? Yeah. Uh, divine in, divine out, right? Yeah. Wealth in, wealth, wealth out, goodness in, goodness out, right? And just mm -hmm. come back like that. <laughs> Well, you know, they always say that if you want more friends, be a better friend. If you want more love, be, be more, it, be more loving. You know, it's like all these things that if you want, you know, more spiritual people in your life, be more spiritual. It's um, all these things all, all start from within. But it comes down to the same thing that most people do not know what to do and how to get started. How do you create that space? for that spiritual development. And a lot of people have no idea. They have all these ideas. Like I posted something and I got things like astrology, alchemy, learning tarot. I mean, these are all tools. Okay. But the, those tools are there to show you to, like you said, an arrow, it's an arrow to point in a certain direction in which you need to work on. So how do you work on that? is the question. What do you need to do to work on that? And I think that that's where people don't even know what that starting point is. So my thoughts are from people that are starting from complete scratch is make a time every single day, whether it's five minutes, 30 minutes or an hour to make that connection and you know, prayer and meditation or creating some kind of ritual that you do to make that connection, depending on the tradition that they come from or the belief structure that they're in, because we're, we're not here to tell you that your belief is wrong. What we're here is to establish it and make it grow more. Right. So, I mean, that's my thoughts is establish a time every single day regardless of what time, how much time it is, you know, maybe it's meditation, but I like, I like to say prayer and meditation because the point behind that is you want to kind of like set your intent and then sit there quietly and see what the spirit has to offer, you know? Yeah, I great. agree. Mm -hmm. What it fundamentally comes down to is you have to commit to creating space, mm -hmm. right? And that I think is the biggest challenge, especially mm -hmm. in, you know, a Western society like ours, where, um, you know, every single moment of our day is filled up with something, you know, we have all these tools 
you know, to make our life easier. And what happens? We just fill that space with more stuff. You know, we're working overtime. You know, we got the kids and various, you know, activities after school. You know, we're trying to get the house cleaned. You know, it's like there's uh, our days are jam packed from the moment we wake up until the moment we go to sleep. Right. So, you know, that can be a very scary idea in and of and itself. It's like, well, how do I even fit that in? Right. Mm -hmm. My recommendation is you need to first look at what you can cut out. Right. Mm -hmm. For example, if uh, your house is messy all the time and you don't have and you just feel like you barely have time to clean, let alone have five minutes to meditate, get rid of some stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. If the car payment you have, you have a beautiful car, but it's you're forcing you to work a job that's stressing you out and you're working 80 hours a week, get rid of that car and get a, and get a more humble car that you don't have to pay for, you know, mm -hmm. that you don't have to work, you know, overtime or you have a job, right? Mm -hmm. Many people's jobs are like literally like toxic relationships, right? Mm -hmm. uh, recognize your value and go and find another position where you don't have to kill yourself and sacrifice your health and well-being and that of your families to work, you know, in a toxic position. Um, there's some, there's a number of things, right? You have to brainstorm on that. Just really ask yourself, like, what is it I can cut out, right? How is it I can just simplify my life? And as you simplify something out of your life, right? Don't go filling it with other things, right? Fill it with the, the space to practice. Mm -hmm. Start with, you know, if you really don't, if you really feel like you don't have any time, right? Uh, do some kind of decluttering of your life and, and, and give yourself five minutes, five minutes of time, right? Once you start seeing and feeling the benefits of just giving mm -hmm. yourself that time, then you'll, you'll be more open and motivated to create 10 minutes and then mm -hmm. 30 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. um, I had a meditation instructor a long time ago who, you know, uh, when you move up from the, from the, it's, the tradition was transcendental meditation, when you move up from the initial 20 minute sessions to what are known as the TM cities, which are which is about an hour and a half, people would say, well, how do I fit that in? And he would say, he would say, how can you not fit that in? Mm -hmm. And then he would also say, you'll be surprised to find how much more time you have in your life when you do fit that in. Right. And <laughs> um, you know what? I was actually listening to a podcast where a guy said the exact same thing. He said that it has proven scientifically that when you meditate a minimum of 20 minutes twice a day, every day, that you are more productive, you're clear minded, you get more done in less time. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a, that's a topic for another podcast, but yeah, I know. Um, and I'll just say real quick on a side quest note. Uh, meditation is uh, hands down one of the best things you can do for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, not only does it create a sense of internal peace, but it actually repairs your neurophysiology mm -hmm. and that allows you to function, um, you know, in, in all areas of your life better. It also gives you the ability to have and formulate that, that, you know, direct connection with the divine. And it doesn't matter what your spiritual path is. You can be a Christian, you can be a Buddhist, you can be a Kabbalist. You can be whatever, you know, your own little thing you made up in your mind because, you know, you're out of the box kind of person. Meditation is for everyone. Meditation and prayer are for everyone. Mm -hmm. And I have to say that I know somebody who belongs to a mystery tradition that was given all various different types of rituals or meditations to do. And he had, um, uh, what do you call it? Like a mental disorder of sorts. And he had gotten a brain scan and they said that there was some problems with making certain connections, you know, with the world, like a little bit on the spectrum, basically. And he decided that he was going to do this regardless. And he was going to do each one of these exercises a minimum of 10 times. Now that's quite a bit because I know that our requirement is at least three and he was doing it like 10. And so he was like 10 times for everything. And he would do it every single day, sometimes twice a day. By the time he would finish a specific grade level, I think he got to like, um, I don't know, the third or the fourth grade level he went back and he had a brain scan. 
completely resolved. Like his brain transformed and the doctor couldn't get it. Like he couldn't understand how did this happen? It happened because believe it or not, you can literally like when you're meditating and you're, you're focusing on something, regardless of if it's systematic, if it's something that you're learning, if you're going through a program or you're part of some sort of like mystical school, if you, if you do this on a regular basis and you're, you're focusing on something, you can literally like shift the way the brain actually, you know, runs. It can completely yeah. change. Yeah. It, 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 meditation actually harmonizes mm -hmm. the two hemispheres of your brain. And, you know, another thing to, to note is, um, you know, our brain, while it's not made of muscle tissue, does function in, in some way like a muscle, right? Mm -hmm. If you think about when you go to the gym and you work out with a weight, you kind of like, uh, break it down and then you build it back up, right? It, it gets, it gets remodeled based on its experience. If you lay around all day, every day, then your muscle starts to atrophy. Mm -hmm. Your brain is the same way. Um, every single thing you do, everything you experience and everything you do, um, in that moment, it creates a, what's known as a neural connection, right? Mm -hmm. If you, if you do that same thing over and over and over again, now you create what's known as a neural bundle. Mm -hmm. And this is this is how habits form. This is mm -hmm. also why habits are so hard to break, right? When you break a habit, like say cigarette smoking or something, it only takes us, takes the body three days to detox from the chemicals. Mm -hmm. The difficult part in overcoming it is you actually have to fight against the physiology in your brain of this huge neural bundle that's been created from literally going like this like a thousand times a day. If you smoke a pack of cigarettes, you're doing this really like a thousand times a day, you know, the same motion. Um, <clears throat> it's the same thing with spirituality, right? When you're giving your brain uh, an experience that harmonizes the hemispheres, that allows it to create a more flexible uh, mode of thinking, perceive things differently, assess and evaluate information differently, it restructures your brain. And that's a, and that's a real physical phenomenon. It's not kooky stuff, right? It's not like, oh, I just believed myself into it. It's, it's demonstrated. And there have been scientific studies that actually demonstrate how uh, meditation impacts the, the neurophysiology. Mm. Absolutely. A hundred percent. But you know how I am with the brain. I'm, that's all like my jam, <laughs> you know, so I'm all, I'm all I'm on board going, yes. Amen, sister. Because <laughs> yeah, because that's like, that is something that I understand completely. It's you get trapped in a rhythm and it's very difficult to get out of because you're, you're so used to allowing your brain to control how you behave Versus you choosing to program your brain to be the person that you want to be. And people say, I can't, I can't. Well, no, it's just hard. So it's like, it kind of comes back to that thing you said about sacrificing. Sacrificing this comfort that you're used to with things being so automatic to creating and telling yourself, I'm going to do this regardless of how uncomfortable it is. And so like, when you are um, creating that space for spirituality, that means that you have to dedicate that time, you know, whether it's, you know, my mother, she's um, Protestant Christian, right? Every single morning she gets up and she does her devotional. She reads and then she journals and she prays and she spends this amount of time with no interruptions every single morning. I don't care what religion you are. I don't care what tradition you are. It doesn't really matter. It's about creating that space for that connection with the divine, you know? Yeah. So, you know, another thing just came to me. Yeah. Um, it was triggered by the, the, I can't, uh, yeah. response. Uh -huh. Um, so when you were in school, when you're in grade school, did you ever mm -hmm. go up to your, to your teacher and say, Hey, can I go to the bathroom and have mm -hmm. her say, well, can you or may you? I went to I went to a Southern uh, Baptist school. When I was oh, you did? I, I that did not know that. All the time. Yep. Pensacola Christian. 
Wow. And, um, and, and she says, well, can you or may you? She was emphasizing the difference between do you have the ability, the capacity to do it, or do you have permission to do it, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of the times when people say, I can't do it, it's not, they, it's not that they can't. It's not that they don't have the ability or the capacity to do it. It's actually because they're really not giving themselves permission. Oh right? my God. Amen, sister. Yes. You got to give yourself permission, babies. Oh my God. Give yourself permission. I love that. That is like one of the things that I, I say all the time. It's like, give yourself permission. I love it. And one of the things that I do, um, what the mindset work is when people start saying I can't is I say to them, say, I choose not to, because it's really, I mean, cause it's like, can you really, I mean, are your legs broken? Are you in a coma? There, is there anything specifically stopping you name it off? And they're like, no, there's not. And I'm like, okay, so it's a choice. So if it's a choice, so what I do is I have them do this exercise. Okay. I'll do it with you real quick. Okay. So you can kind of get a feel for it. Okay. So what I want you to do is close your eyes and just say, I can't, I can't. And just feel the feeling of what it feels like. Oh, I know. I'm not resonating at all. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to say that, but just play along because I'll bring you back up. Okay. I'm going to play along. <laughs> Okay, I can't. Just tell me okay. what it feels like. Well, I don't know if I'm a great guinea pig because A, like I said, I'm an Aquarius rising. <laughs> B, I, I have really worked hard to condition myself in my life to uh, not, not utilize words and phrases like that mm -hmm. because okay. every time you do it, it just reinforces that. So I have actually a gross aversion to it. Um, but you know, I, I can, you know, can you back to retire? Yeah. I used to talk, say that stuff to myself all the so time. So what does it feel you like know? when you say that? It's very, I mean, it's degrading. It's um, degrading. Yeah. It, it makes me feel entrapped. Entrapped. It that's it. Enslaved. Mm -hmm. Um, right. You know, it just, it takes away my power, mm -hmm. right? It takes exactly. away my ability to, to, to okay. actually, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so. It's like, it's like a cage has been dropped over you and you cannot move forward, you know? Right. It's powerless. And okay. So now what it's self-abuse. I want yeah. to be clear with people. It is self-abuse. It and is. Why can I say that so strongly? I'll mm -hmm. tell you why. Okay. When I was younger, uh, earlier in life, my teens and in my twenties, I had an eating disorder mm -hmm. and I used to, every single time I would walk by a mirror, I'd lift up my shirt and I'd look at my stomach, which was like my biggest point of insecurity. And I'd say, God, why are you so fat? Why can't you lose weight? Now I would say that to myself I don't know, 20 to 50 times a day. Every time mm -hmm. I went to the bathroom, every time I saw my reflection in a mirror or in a window, or it, it, I just was like so compelled towards mm -hmm. my reflection in this very toxic manner. Right. And, and it just, it was this, mm -hmm. this constant beating myself up. Right. And then, and then I'll just call this the intercession by my higher self. All right. Mm -hmm. One day I was doing this and I, I heard literally a voice. It, it was like inside of me, but it, kind of, it, did, it wasn't like from me. Right. And I said, you know, what would you do if a man that you were dating said this to you said, you know, you're, Fat. Why can't you lose weight? And I was like, I'll tell him. Oh. <laughs> you know? Yeah, like, exactly. And, 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 and it said, well, why? And I was like, because that's abusive. And uh -huh. so and then my higher self said to me, then why are you abusing yourself? Why are you OK with that? Mm -hmm. And that was such a huge shocker for me. Right. So powerful. So, it's a very extreme situation. Yeah. Right. But we do we do this to ourselves every day, mm -hmm. telling ourselves we can't we shouldn't, you know, whatever it is. So like it's abuse. Reviews, yeah. We're, it's, abu we're abusing ourselves. It's we're limiting abuse. ourselves and we're abusing ourselves and we're degrading ourselves. Yeah. So, okay. So what if now just say the words I choose not to, what does that feel like? Well, it's a, it's definitely a softens up the, I can't. 
Mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, it definitely brings the flavor more to, to self-responsibility. I can't say though that, uh, oh, I said the can't word. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't choose to say. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, when you say, when you say you're choosing, yeah, it's it's empowering because you realize that you have a choice and it brings your power back, right? It does bring your power back, but I still do find it. um, I guess it would depend on the topic, right? Because it was something that, you know, I I knew was, you know, uh, bad. And I said, I choose not to do that. That'd be very empowering. But if it was something that I was, you know, that was good for me and I was saying, I choose not to do it. You know, I still know I have the power, Mm -hmm. right? But it's still not feeling that great because I also know that I'm not choosing the right path for myself. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So that's the next step is, um, so, so typically what it does is it opens up choice and it realizes that you do have the power. It reminds me of, um, the tarot card, the devil. And, you know, you've got those two people that they think they're chained to the devil and, but they're not. And, and it's, um, they think that they're, they're being forced, but they're not, you're, you, you're, you're not, you're, you're doing this to yourself. So the second that you realize that you are making the choice to, to do this thing, you also realize that you have the choice to do something different. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's just clarify though, real quick for the viewers, um, in the traditional, uh, very traditional versions of the tarot deck the 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 two people that are standing underneath the devil they're actually holding on to their chains yeah which is a very powerful symbolism you know in other versions Mm -hmm. they're actually chained down or there's a a very other various other positions or whatever right but in the traditional tarot they're actually holding on to their chains and it's meant to indicate you know what uh what aquarius was just was just noting is that you know we we delude ourselves. We believe all kinds of things, but many times we're often just choosing to chain ourselves to those beliefs or those restrictions or those ideas. And all we have to do is let it go. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's the bottom line is, is that when we realize that we're making the choice to do something that we told ourselves we couldn't do, realize it, it's a, it is our choice. Then we're making, then we realize that we have the choice to do something different. So once a person actually makes that consciousness and awareness, okay, because most people don't even realize it. They just think I can't. And, and they're like, it's a choice. So then the next thing I do. Normalized. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Next thing I do is why are you making that choice? And And then when they recognize why, you know, and they step into that, then they're able to say, this isn't really in alignment with how I want to believe or how I choose to move forward. So then, then they can consciously say, I'm making a different choice now because now I understand that I can. It's just that it may be hard. It may be something I have to sacrifice, (laughs) you know, it may be, um, you know, Maybe, you know, me having to reorganize my schedule or somebody else is going to have to suffer because of it or whatever. So kind of bringing that full circle to our topic about making that time, you know, you can wake up an extra hour early. So if somebody says, I can't make that time, why can't you just wake up an extra hour? I usually get up at like 7:30 usually. <laughs> I actually want to talk on I want to talk on that actually. <laughs> um and um and so I I usually do that and I typically um get up and I have an hour to do my spiritual work. Now recently you and I started talking at eight o'clock and I'm like, okay, this means that I need to get up an hour earlier to do my spiritual work in the morning. And And so it's like, so that means that I need to make an adjustment to my life because I prioritize something else that was in that space. So that means, okay, now I need to, I need to slide it back in. What is it going to harm me to get an extra hour less of sleep? 
or maybe just go to bed an hour earlier. You know, what, what is the difference in people will say, Oh, well, I have kids or I have this. Well, if your kids are staying up till 10 o'clock at night, that's a problem. <laughs> you know, you need to be like putting them to bed and um, because they have school and they need that, that sleep. But, but um, you know, making that time for yourself, you know, Humans can function off of five to six hours of sleep. Me, you know, I'm, I'm the exception. I need eight. <laughs> but anyway, no, I, I, um, make it I, up with meditating 20 minutes twice a day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. There you go. There you go. Well, before we go on, can I speak to this, the, the, the getting up early? Yeah, absolutely. Go for it. So there's, there's just two, po two points I want to make one, um, if, if if somebody takes the time to to study uh, the life habits of the most successful and richest people of the world, mm -hmm. um, one thing that they'll find is that they dedicate themselves to sleep uh, and and waking up early. They wake up earlier than everybody else, right? And it's not just to get more work in. It's not to get five hours of work in before everybody else comes in. It's to get time for themselves to take time to drink their coffee and read their book and meditate and do things, right? They wreck the most successful people in the world recognize they have to, they have to give themselves that time and they prioritize it first of anything of the day. It's for them, right? Now, I'll tell you what, I used to be like, people who get up before 10 a.m. are crazy, right? And then I started studying like the habits of people who were most successful in the world. And I saw this and I was like, wow, maybe I should try that. And let me just tell you, I am not like, oh, I'm just going to get up uh, one hour early. It's going to be great. I, at least I wasn't then, you know, type of person. You don't have to just make gross changes in your life like that, right? Mm -hmm. In fact, that usually sets people up for failure because it's very... It can be very shocking, you know, to your life and to your body and, and stuff. So let's, if you want to wake up an hour earlier every day, you know, uh, start going to bed, you know, five, 10 minutes earlier at night and wake up five, 10 minutes earlier the next day. Or what actually what I would recommend is just start going to bed five, 10 minutes earlier and keep and staying on the same schedule for about a week or two and then start walking it back five minutes, just waking up five minutes earlier for a week or even two weeks, then 10 minutes earlier, a week, two weeks, however long it takes you to acclimate, right? Mm -hmm. That way you're, you know, uh, you're not just putting undue pressure on yourself, but you're making, you're making changes. And what, if, so what if it takes six months? Okay. I'll just tell you from my own experience, it's better to take six months to walk yourself into a schedule where you're getting up an hour or two earlier every day for yourself mm -hmm. than to never do it, right? Mm -hmm. Six months versus 10 years. Think about it like that. Six months or in 10 years, you're thinking to yourself, man, I wish I would have done that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, you know, um, there's there's a lot of things. Um, I, I learned from a, a guy who's a personal trainer and he was um, he was really a smart individual and he talked about finding ways to cheat your way into getting what you want. And, and it was really interesting. Cause I was like, he goes, you cheat exercise, you cheat, find cheat, meditate, you cheat, you know, reading a self-help book. And basically what he was talking about was, um, Oh, I'm going to take the stairs instead of an elevator. There's a cheat exercise. It's an opportunity to give yourself a little extra exercise. I'm going to park at the end of the parking lot so that I get a cheat exercise of walking. How do you cheat meditate though? I got to hear that one. Okay. Um, in the shower, in the bathtub, you know, yeah, he, there's, there's a couple of different ways, you know, um, you know I, what? You're right. <laughs> you're, you're right. Actually, I used to have to do that when I was in grad school uh -huh. and I was, so busy. I had a young kid and I was in grad school getting my PhD. I would cheat. I would cheat spiritual practice in the bathroom. Yeah. Right? I would go in there because nobody ever asks you. This is that life hack people. Nobody ever asks you what you're doing when you go to the bathroom for 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes. Right. Mm -hmm. And ladies, let me just say, 
If men can go in there for 30 minutes, so can you. Yes. Go cheat your way into some meditation in the bathroom if you want to. <laughs> and it's the best way to do it. Light some candles, turn out the lights, put on some soft music. and just Go find like that, that private music. that private bathroom that yeah. nobody, that nobody <laughs> goes exactly. to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, there's, um, I, I, and one of the things when I'm working with people on doing like mindset work, I'm like, we're taking out all the bad stuff and adding good stuff. So if you have time to sit here and think negative thoughts, you have time to put in positive thoughts. So I need you to sit here and look at where you're putting in the negative thoughts. What are you doing that's giving you that space to do that and do something different? So it's input, input, input. So go listen to a positive podcast. Go listen to me and Pluto. <laughs> go listen to, um, go read one of the blogs on Facebook or, you know, it's positive input, positive input. If you have time to sit there and follow all the conspiracy theories, then you have time to follow all the positive spiritual input. If Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, um, why can't I think of it now? What? See, I don't watch the news anymore. Let's do, let's do an election season challenge, okay? Mm -hmm. Where every time you want to get on and listen to the news or look at your phone and look at that political junk yeah. that you know is going to work you up, just whip out whip out that podcast, that spiritual mm -hmm. thing. And so this is how I got off social media, actually. I got a book. And every time I was compelled to get on social media initially, I would just pick up the book instead. Right. And mm -hmm. I, it was a habit. I had to break myself free of it. Um, you know, so uh, election season, election, yeah. election season. Yeah, because people challenge. are getting very worked up over it, you know. And um, so like when I'm driving, that's when I listen to my audiobooks. When I am sometimes, you know, like when I'm um, taking a bath, sometimes I'll listen to my audiobooks during that time. Sometimes I do it before I go to bed. Um, sometimes I do it when I'm having my coffee. So these are all things that I'm trying to input into my brain. Like I found this guy who's a Jewish rabbi and he was going over the deeper meanings of the scriptures and stuff. And it was really fascinating to me. So I really wanted to learn, you know, a little bit more of what he had to say. So I would find that time during the things that I normally do cooking, for example, like these are just so many different ways that you can throw in those cheats, you know, you want to learn more, you want to, you want to develop yourself, like, you know, do it while you're cooking, do it while you're driving, do it, you know, there's like so many different ways. Um, yeah, but I would just say, you know, um, definitely maximize your day by doing mm -hmm. stuff like this, mm -hmm. but don't, don't let it rob you from having real space mm -hmm. for yourself too. You know, you really do need that. It's not about want. It's not about selfishness or selfishness. It's a necessity it is. for you, for your mental, emotional well-being, your physical health, and yes, your spiritual health as well. Mm -hmm. Do do use those ways, you know, to help manifest that mindset and create more actual space in your life. Sit and drink that coffee in bed on Sunday. Let the kids get all crazy downstairs, you know, sit and read your book, relax, meditate. Mm -hmm. You deserve it. It's a necessity. Put your life mask on first before mm -hmm. everyone else. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You need to like start your day. They, they say that if you start your day with positive things that you're doing, you end up having um, an, you have an amazing day. And, you know, um, <clears throat> one of the things that I do before I go to bed every single night is I spend time communing with my higher self and my guardian angels. And I do that every single night. So it's like, before I go to bed, I close my eyes, I go through my whole like, rituals that I do for protection. And then I start my communion. It, you know, you're going to be laying in bed for a few minutes anyway, why not utilize that time as a cheat moment, you know, or when you first wake up, how many people actually wake up and stay in bed for another 15 or 30 minutes, utilize that time. There's, there's, um, there's ways to, 
cheat, meditate, cheat, read, cheat, listen to podcasts. <laughs> you know, all you're doing is basically just utilizing it and moving it into an, you know, another place. Like I would spend every single morning um, spending an hour drinking my coffee. Now I fix one cup of coffee, I drink it, and I utilize that extra 30, 45 minutes to do something that's important for me. It's it's about taking, where can you take that space? I think you mentioned this in the very beginning. It's about what can you remove from your life? Like, look at everything you're doing and say, what's not necessary? And make this a priority. So I just want to thank every single one of you guys. This is a really good place to close it off. And you know what? Oh, wait, I want to I want to end with one more comment. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. So I just want all of our viewers and wonderful fam to know what we what we practice, we preach. Mm-hmm. And you know, uh, Aquarius was speaking earlier about earlier about how we were having eight eight o'clock meetings and she needed to get up earlier. Mm-hmm. And I went to her yesterday and I said, you know what? We should consider pushing our meeting back to maybe mid-morning so we can have the space, make sure we're taking the space for ourselves and not fall into the temptation to get out of our spiritual practices. So mm-hmm. we're there with you, fam. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, and there's nothing wrong with uh, making adjustments. You know, my my thought is you come up with a plan, you play the plan out. And you see how it works. If it doesn't work, you make adjustments. Then you play it out again until you find the perfect, you know, patterns that work for you. So anyways, but on that note, I just want to thank everybody. This has been an amazing conversation. Thank you so much, Pluto. I loved having this conversation with you. I love hearing your knowledge. And, you know, of course, you know, I love you. So <laughs> and you know, it's a team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you guys, what we want to do is last week we had a loving challenge and some of you guys actually participated and it was absolutely amazing how people were like really reaching out and trying to be loving every single day. So I think that we should have a challenge this week where we're making space for some kind of spiritual practice. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. And if you, and if you get rid of anything physical or if you can show it in any way, like a picture or whatever, Mm -hmm. post it, post it to the platform. I'm going to do that actually. Yeah. I'm actually going to go through my house this week and I'm just going to get rid of stuff Mm -hmm. because I want less stuff. I have, I'm a Virgo son and I'll, I feel like I got to organize it all the time. That takes up time. And I feel like I need to do that first before I do other things. Otherwise I just Mm -hmm. feel distracted. I'm just Mm -hmm. getting rid of stuff this week. Yeah. So my personal commitment, um, because I I have to say it's been up and down, you know, um, with when I do it. Okay. So I always make sure I do it. It's just what what slot do I have today that I can slide it in? I'm going to, I'm going to give up. I'm going to sacrifice words. (laughs) I'm going to sacrifice some time in my morning and I'm going to utilize that space And be very organized about it for my spiritual practice. Because I have a few more essays to write that I still haven't done. And so I'm going to make sure that I do that. So I'm going to map out that time frame. So that's my commitment. And um, you said that you're going to get rid of something. Um, Yeah, get rid of something. I'm just... I mean, there, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff at this point, but that's the point, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, less is more. Less mm-hmm. is more. Less stuff you have, less you have to clean, less yeah. you have to worry about. So you guys that are in the group, or even if you are watching this on YouTube, you can put it in the comments, like what you're going to give up. What are you going to sacrifice this week so that you can get that spiritual space? So let's do a challenge this week. We're going to sacrifice something so that we can make space for that spiritual practice. So I want you to be posting exactly when you're, what you're going to do and what you're going to do. I don't care if it's five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever it is. If it's ritual practice, if it's meditation, if it's devotional or journaling, I don't care. You just decide what it is and post it. And let's see what the results are because last week the results were really good on the loving <laughs> challenge. So let's see how you can um, really make a change in your life and commit to doing this for a week. That'd be great. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Love you all.
Bye.